Okay, so we will do a quick introduction to Scallion, which is usually done by Brandon McLean himself. Um, and he's, of course, much better suited to introduce you into this uh, software. However, Brandon is not here, so um, I will do my very best to um, replace him and um, present the slides. So the slides are all uh, his slides that he usually shows to the people who start working with Skyline for the first time. And it's a wrap up about how Skyline works, its principles, and a little bit about the history. So Skyline was, um, yeah, the, the principal investigator, the main developer behind Skyline is Brandon McLean who's working at the University of Washington in the group of um, Mike McCoss. And Skyline star uh, Brandon started this Skyline project um, as um, a tool, as a software tool for chromatography-based quantification. So what's very important to know or to understand about Skyline is that the major unit or the major type of information that uh, Skyline is very good in dealing with is chromatograms, extracted ion chromatograms. Um, so, and these uh, extracted ion chromatograms we already discussed a lot. So uh, what Skyline can do is it can go it into the raw data that you load into Skyline and uh, if you provide some specific M over Z values, some specific peptides uh, or fragment ions or transitions that you're interested in, Skyline will search for these masses in uh, the raw data and it will extract these chromatographic peaks and that's what you will see then. Skyline is a tool to show you chromatograms. And we spoke about these four different types of data acquisition that you can do. And initially, when Skyline was started, it was designed to work with SRM data, so with the classical targeted proteomics data. But now, uh, in our days, Skyline can deal with any of the other types of data as well. So Skyline can also extract from you precursors and fragment ion chromatograms from PRM, precursors from, from DDA and precursors and fragment ions from DIA data. Exactly. So, And that's also something that people sometimes at the beginning need to get their head around a little bit. So in SRM, when you load SRM data, Skyland will only be able to show you fragment ion chromatograms. It's the only thing it will be able because that's the only type of data that's acquired in SRM. While in PRM, if you have included full MS1 scans in your data acquisition method, Skyline will be able to show you both MS1 and MS2 level precursor chromatograms and fragment ion chromatograms. In DDA, on the other hand, uh, you will only be able to make reasonable peaks from MS1 data because MS2 data will be very scarce, especially if you work with dynamic exclusion function, you will never get a nice chromatographic peak from MS2 data. Um, so DDA is MS1 level in Skyline typically, and DIA is just as PRM MS1 as well as MS2 data, okay? So what can Skyline not do? So what's often also, I think, important to understand or to know is that Skyline cannot identify peptide sequences for you as other search engines do that. So Skyline is not a search engine. But what Skyline can do is it can import or load search engine results from various search engine tools that are out there. I will soon show you a list pretty much from any established search engine that is out there. It can load the, the results, the identifications, but Skyline itself will not do the identifications for you. It's not a search engine. And also when it comes to isobaric labeling and reporter ion intensities, so what uh, Sue introduced to already, uh, so Skyline is a tool for chromatography photography based quantification that's its strength if you want to do reporter ion intensity quantification uh, the typical yeah, TMT eye track type of quantification this is not what Skyline can do for you it's always chromatography based okay so this is the uh, Skyline website I'm sure you have all seen it uh, did any one of you not manage to download Skyline on your laptops everybody has Skyline installed you Okay, this is definitely something we need to soon fix. Exactly, but this is the Skyline website. You have probably all seen where you can download uh, Skyline. Um, always the, the most recent Skyline version will be shown here. Currently, we are working with Skyline 4.2. But what's also important to know is that there is a beta version, a Skyline daily version. Um, and uh, this version is updated much more frequently than 
this official Skyline uh, version, the blue button, uh, which means that new features that are included into Skyline will be always first available via Skyline Daily. And you are all very welcome to also download and work with Skyline Daily. Um, but this version is thought to be like a beta tester version for the more experienced people that also will report potential errors and issues that are maybe in this beta tester version. But uh, yeah, everybody who, who feels like who wants to work with the newest features and who feels like also being uh, able to report some issues is very welcome to work with the Skyline daily version. Okay, this is a slide showing the history of Skyline. So Skyline was started, I think, in 2009. So it's, it's, it's in its 11th year of development. Uh, there are now seven developers working on it. It's open source and freely available for everybody. Uh, 11,000 registered, user, registered users. Um, and you can see here, so end of 2018, on average, there were 18,000 instances of when, when Skyline was started um, in each week uh, worldwide. Um, yeah, and how you, here you can see how this um, starts of Skyline per week increased over the last years. It's pretty um, amazing. Um, what Brendan always tells when he shows this uh, graph is this very reproducible and uh, uh, deep spike into these instances of starts, which is happening at a perfectly yearly rhythm, which is always the Christmas break uh, worldwide, where he always says, so nobody works with Skyline over Christmas. Um, but other than that, uh, it's yeah, a constant increase in, in usage, and that shows yeah, that Skyline is really an, an exceptional success story, I think, out there as a software tool in the proteomics world. Um, Skyline is supported by all six uh, vendors of mass spectrometers. Um, and as Sue already uh, told you, that's actually also one of the purposes of Skyline right from the beginning was to generate a software tool that is usable for no matter which type of mass spectrometer you're working with. And Brennan really um, kept on this uh, principle right from the beginning until now. Uh, this is um, a map uh, where you can also see the uh, session durations or the usage of Skyline um, worldwide. Uh, of course, this blue hub here is the hub around Seattle. So uh, a lot of people in Seattle uh, use Skyline, of course. But there are by now also quite a lot of other hubs. So Boston is, I guess, here under this hub, also a very uh, frequent user of Skyline. Uh, Europe, of course. So Germany is, my country is on rank two of uh, session durations. Um, but also in China or in Australia or in Brazil. Here, here you see once more how these videos, the webinars or the tutorials look like on the website. It's really very easy to find them. So uh, this is a list. There are 17 webinars by now and you can just look for your favorite topic or if you have a specific question, you can see is there a webinar for me. Um, it's about all different types of topics and the tutorials uh, you also find on this website. So this is an overview of all the tutorials. There are more the introductory tutorials with the basics, which you will learn a lot in the next two days. Um, there are also tutorials on PRM or DIA data, on working with metabolites, with small molecules, and a lot of different more advanced topics. And these are all the different courses ongoing worldwide, and they are just getting yeah, more and more and uh, very well attended. Okay, so um, this is also a slide Brandon always likes to show to once more um, emphasize the way how Skyline works or how you should consider using Skyline. Because as you learned now in these lectures this morning is that uh, targeted proteomics is really something, so especially SRM and, and PRM measurements is something where you need to think about several iterative circles that you need to do until you have a final method that you would like to apply onto a large data set. So if you plan to do SRM or PRM experiments, you must right from the beginning plan to invest some time on refining and optimizing your best method. It will very rarely happen that you just come up with a list of transitions or a list of peptide precursors and you just apply this to hundreds of, of samples. It's much more often the case that you need to go to, to these refinement cycles, which means you start with some type of prior knowledge to build a method, you run the method, 
then you evaluate the results, and then you refine. And refining means you, for example, throw out peptides that you thought were detectable, but they are not anymore. Uh, so they are not really measurable, so you don't want to waste time on those. Or you throw you find they are degrading or they are not digested efficiently or you first do a non-scheduled measurement and then you start doing scheduling or you optimize any other type of parameter, collision energy, declustering uh, potential, whatever. And um, once you refine your parameters, you will actually build a new method which you will run again, evaluate, and this cycle can actually happen a few times before you have a final method. And the cool thing is that Scalan is exactly built to support you in all these steps. So it's, a, it's the tool to build the methods, to export a method, run it, load the results again into Scalan, and do this refinement in a very easy and straightforward way. Okay, so the principles once more that Skyline or how, how Brandon uh, envisions Skyline is Skyline is a tool that should make your data or your chromatograms in your data visible. And I think when you work a lot with DDA and when you're used to get as an output a big list of intensities and peptides from a table, you very often do not really know about the quality of the numbers in this list. And Skyline should be a tool for you to really look deeper into the raw data, to make your data visible and to better judge the quality of your data. Um, and it's also a tool that should re, uh, support, we said this many times already, every file format to be imported. So you can import raw files from thermal instruments directly, but you can also import WIF files from SIEX instruments directly. So every vendor should be uh, so, uh, uh, supported by Skyline, as well as different other sof software outputs. So here, for example, you see the list of all the uh, database search engines that Skyline supports. So my favorite search engine I'm working a lot with is MaxQuant and I can directly load my msms.txt output files which are MaxQuant output files into Skyline. Uh, same is true for Mascot or for the TPP. Um, so Brandon really made a huge effort to to make all of these different output formats that are out there from different search engine directly loadable into Skyline. Um, and another important feature in Skyline is that everything that you put in, you should also be able to put out again. So in Skyline there is this export function where every parameter, every intensity, every number that is in Skyline is also exportable again. So you can customize specific reports for you and um, generate, again, tables with, with all information in order to put them again into other tools and, and further work with them. And also the support for external tools is something that I think makes Skyline very exceptional. So um, a lot of people, of course, uh, write a lot of very good tools to further analyze mass spec data uh, using R scripts or Python scripts or whatever type of scripts. And in order to make these external tools nicely inter, uh, interfaceable with Skyline. There is here in the Skyline um, uh, headline here, these tools buttons and the tool stores, where you can find a variety of external tools that people have published um, and which you can use for various types of, of data analysis. So MSStats is a very popular, very famous um, external tool that is supported by Skyline, um, which is also by far the most external tool. It's a tool from Vitek here from Northeastern, uh, which you can use to do statistic and analysis on your targeted data uh, afterwards. But also many other um, external tools here are, are supported. And as you see from the downloads, they're actually also quite used by the people. So if you are a computational person and you write a cool script, I think also from this point of view of, of the developer, it's very cool to get it into Skyline because you will have a much bigger audience being able or knowing about your tool and being maybe able to use it. Um, yeah, so this here is the Skyline user interface. I'm sure many of you have, have seen it. Are there people who have never worked with Skyline before they are coming here to the course? One, oh yeah, quite a few. So you will open Skyline for the first time then soon. So this is what you will see. It will look pretty empty. <laughs> so you will have a target empty big gray box, which will also look very empty. Uh, and the very first thing that you will always have to do 
when you start a new project in Skyline is to go up here to these settings. There is these settings buttons and there you find this peptides and transition settings. And this is really something I can just emphasize right from the beginning. You should always take a very good look at because in these settings you define in Skyline the whole parameters information of your experiment. So you tell in digestion, for example, Skyline, which enzyme you worked with and what was the proteome you worked with. You can here predict retention times, you can load the library, you can just specify the modifications that you are maybe working with or interested in. And also in these transition settings, you define which transitions you would like to work with, how many transitions from a library you would like to have. So these Trend, these settings, these two settings are really, really super important. And when people come to me and say, ah, Skyline is not working, it's not doing what I want it to do, it's having a mistake, it's almost always the case that something in these settings is not set accordingly. So I can just really emphasize you should, you should uh, pay good attention and you will learn a lot about these settings in these next two days. And this is how Skyline can potentially look like when you load data. So now there is no more gray window and the targets window now is populated with um, information. So here this target window will always contain your targets of interest. So this is where you specify what proteins, peptides, precursors and transitions I'm interested in. And it really has this tree-like structure. So on the first um, level you will always have a protein name under the protein and on the next level you will have the peptide sequences that you would want to target for that protein. So in this case I have two peptides here. Uh, then there is a new protein with one peptide. After the peptide sequence level you will have the precursor level. So here you will see the precursor, it's the doubly charged precursor that I'm targeting for this peptide. And I target it in two forms, namely the light version is the one up here heavy, which you see here in brackets. So this peptide I want to target light and heavy. And these are the two corresponding precursor masses. And under the precursor mass, you finally find all the transitions. So this target window is always going from protein right over precursor to all the transitions. And what's also important to understand is, depending on what you highlight here, you will change the views of all the other windows. So if you highlight the protein up here, you will see protein information on all the other windows. If you highlight a peptide, you will see peptide information. If you highlight the precursor, you will see the precursor information. Okay, from here in this window, uh, we have the library. So I loaded a library into this Skyline document, and that's what I see here the library spectrum of the highlighted peptide. If I would highlight the next peptide, you would see the new library spectrum for that peptide. Um, and this window here, these three windows are now my raw data windows. So here I see the raw information, the extracted ion chromatograms for all those different targets. So in this case, I have loaded three different, um, three different samples and I can see the chromatograms of the three different samples picked. Um, and it's two different colors, red means light peptide, blue means heavy peptide, and because I highlighted this peptide uh, on that level, I see always the sum of all the transitions. If I would highlight transitions, I would see individual transitions. And then there are the other two most important and for me absolutely, uh, yeah, favorite windows why I enjoyed working with Skyline right from the beginning. And these are these two windows down here, which are replicate comparison windows. So when I worked with Scalin the first time, I was before mainly working with Excalibur from Thermo, and I was always looking at extracted ion chromatograms sample by sample. And when I saw this, I was like, oh my God, this is so good. Because he, this is the retention time replicate comparison. So you see here on the Y axis, the retention time, and on the X axis, the three different samples. And you can always see the start and the stop, so the two boundaries where Skyline mm, picked a peak. So these are the two dashed lines, if you like, up and down. The black line is the peak apex um, that you see. And you can see that I have the same boundaries for light and heavy in the three different samples, but I have slightly different retention times, but still very similar. And the same window here is uh, peak area, so that's the same type of information, not for 
retention time, but for peak area. So you can see that our, the three blue curves, which are the three heavy spike in peptides, are reasonably similar, not super similar, but in the same intensity range, while the red intensities are the three red chromatograms. This is my endogenous sample of interest. And you can see that this peak increases in intensity over the three samples. And these two windows here really are very good windows to convey you a lot of information very quickly um, and to spot outliers or to spot problems. And, and they are the reason I think why it's very, very nice to work uh, with Skyline. And you can not just look at three samples, but you can look at a lot of samples. You can load, yeah, 100 samples into Skyline uh, easily, then really follow retention time over a lot of samples, follow people and spot weird things that are happening from a certain time point where suddenly intensity change and, and start troubleshooting with them. Last slide is about panorama. So also Lindsay mentioned it, uh, another very important part of, of Skyline or the whole Skyline idea is to also provide a, a freely available server to um, publish Skyline documents. So you, with just one click more or less, publish your fully annotated uh, Skyline documents that you want to publish in the publication. You can put them onto this uh, Panorama public server and provide the link to them in your just as you would do it with Pride or Proteomics Exchange, I think, is what most people do with DDA data when they publish it and provide the Pride or Proteomics Exchange link. The same you can do with targeted data using Panorama and providing links. And uh, this is really a very nice piece of work that by, uh, is, is led by Vagisha Shama and Josh Eccles. And uh, you can use this Panorama server also for quality controls of your mass spec. So you can automatically load QC runs into there. Uh, it's free and open source. And I think on Wednesday, um, Lindsay will tell you a bit more about it and how to use it. Yes, so this is once more the amazing Skyline team who did uh, this fantastic work of making such a useful scientific software, which I think, yeah, especially the fact that it's, it's still free and open source for everyone to use is absolutely remarkable. And um, yes, I'm at the end of my presentation. Are there any more questions to Skyline? <laughs>